Hello there YouTube, this is the Suburbanator here. Uh, as you can see, this is of course a 2005 to 2010 Cobalt. This specific one's an 08, but anyway. Uh, this has the manual transmissions. Now there's two of them. There's the M86, which is found in the non-SS models, and the MU3. Now one thing they do have in common is their mounts, from what I was told. Now, there are four of them. Many are asking, well, where are they? What does front and rear mean? Because that is a bit confusing, given that this is a transverse mounted engine. Because, technically, this is the front of the engine here. And this is the back. But any of these people who are selling engine mounts for these, and they say front and rear, they're referring to the car, in reference to the car. So... But uh, the engine mounts you're going to see sold uh, the most. Um, maybe you can see me touching it here. You will have to uh, take this whole airbox assembly off when you're ready to get that mount off. This is the first one right here. It's the front of the engine, but it's actually the, the right side of the car, the passenger side. Then you've got this mount. I don't know how well you can see it right here. Shining the light on it but it's under this electrical box this would have to come off but the other, but the two most crucial mounts would be what they call the front mounts and the rear mounts because that controls the torsion of the engine and it's most likely when these start to soften up and come apart which I was told they're very prone to that's when you easily start losing traction and get that annoying wheel hop even under very light acceleration but here's the front one many have asked where's the rear uh, it's in there it's buried under there you can see me shining the light on it. Probably be easier if we went under it, but you can see it right here. I'm looking right at it. Let me see if I can touch it from here. No, I'm definitely not going to be able to, but uh, you can see me shining the light on it. In fact, it's just under the car. Ugh. Oh boy. Oh, I got to really start dropping a few pounds here. Uh, see these three bolts here? That's not to hold on the rack. That is to hold the engine mount on the back of this. Which, um... Ugh. Ugh. I know, I know. I gotta lay off the White Castle burgers. They're just so delicious. Oh, why does all the good stuff have to be so bad for you? There we go. Yeah, here, here it is. I can even touch it from under here. Right here. No, don't go away on your flashlight. I need you. Anyway, here it is. I can feel it a little bit, and I think it did in fact come apart. And uh, that really sucks because I haven't spent enough money in this car already. I'm still out of work. But uh, yeah, it's this mount and this one right over here. Those are the ones of most interest because, like I said before, that controls the um, the back and forth movement. Uh, sometimes they sell just the inserts. I strongly advise against that because I keep hearing um, they usually don't go in right. And uh, the stock brackets are not that strong. So just buy the whole mount. But that's what they mean by front and rear mounts. I don't see anything done for this mount, but this one just supports the transmission. It's really this one over here and the front and rear. Those are your most crucial mounts. Uh, if you look at their design carefully, it's just made of very soft rubber and it thins out near the center bolt. Um, the other mounts, the aftermarket ones, will uh, be a full polyurethane. Like they don't cut off at certain corners. It's completely filled up with polyurethane. And it's not one of those ricer upgrades. Uh, it will in fact make a day and night difference. Um, now as far as the interchangeability between the SS and the non-SS mounts, I just need to further clarify that, but this video was mainly to show where the mounts are, and uh, I hope this was helpful.